Assalamu alaikum everyone. In hepatology today we are going to talk about cirrhosis. So what is cirrhosis? It is a chronic liver disease which is characterized by fibrosis, disrupted or deranged liver function and architecture and widespread nodules formation in the liver. So these three features are important. Fibrosis, disrupted or deranged architecture and nodules in the liver. So this, these three features constitute the definition of cirrhosis. Now come to the little bit pathophysiology of cirrhosis. If there is any injury to the hepatocyte, maybe due to any reason, maybe due to viral hepatitis or alcoholic abuse, when the hepatocyte got damaged, there is a release of cytokines from this hepatocyte or injured hepatocyte as well as from the Kupffer cells. These cytokines stimulate the stellate cells in the space of DC. These stellate cells start converting into fibroblast-like cells, very large size of fibroblast. And these fibroblasts then secrete the collagen, a collagen protein as well as cytokines. And these cytokines then damage most of the hepatocytes and these collagen causes fibrosis. So fibrosis occurs in case of cirrhosis. So this was a little bit pathophysiology. Histologically, it is classified into micronodular cirrhosis or macronodular cirrhosis. In micronodular cirrhosis, the nodules are usually 1 millimeter in diameter and it is more common in alcoholic abuse or alcoholic cirrhosis. While the macronodular nodules are present in of various sizes and these micronodules are very common in viral hepatitis when the cause for cirrhosis is viral hepatitis. Now come to the causes of cirrhosis. The most common cause worldwide is chronic viral hepatitis B or C. But in the Western world or in the European countries, the most common cause like UK, the most common cause is alcohol abuse. The other causes are non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, NAFLD. And the other immune causes are primary sclerosing cholangitis, autoimmune hepatitis. And in the biliary system, there is primary biliary cholangitis, secondary biliary cirrhosis, cystic fibrosis. Some genetic disorders like hemochromatosis in which there is excessive deposition of iron in the body and Wilson's disease, excessive copper in the liver and other alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. 10% of the causes are cryptogenic or without any reason or for unknown reason. The other causes are chronic venous outflow obstruction in the liver and any chronic liver disease. But remember that these two initial causes are very important. One is alcohol, which is common in the European world, while the second cause, which is worldwide common, is chronic viral hepatitis. Now come to the features of cirrhosis. Sometimes the patients are asymptomatic, while in some patients the other features of cirrhosis are present. The first feature in some patient is hepatomegaly or increased size of the liver. This hepatomegaly is common in alcoholic hepatitis or alcoholic cirrhosis and there is a reduced size of liver in some cases, especially chronic viral hepatitis, there is reduced size of liver. The other features may be present in the cirrhosis are jaundice because of hyperbilirubinemia. Lack of, the lack of excretion of bilirubin causes this jaundice and when there is a hyperbilirubinemia, there is a pruritus or itching of the skin in some patients. Remember, jaundice is the discoloration, yellowish discoloration of the skin, and icterus is the yellow discoloration of sclera. The other features are ascites. Basically, ascites is a complication of cirrhosis. This ascites is is result of portal hypertension. When there is a portal hypertension, increased pressure in the portal vein, which in the backward increases the vas planknic vasodilation. Due to this planknic vasodilation, ascites occurs. Ascites is basically the accumulation of excessive fluid in the abdominal cavity. The other changes are circulatory changes. The first change is spider telangiectasia. It telangiectasia means swollen blood vessels. These are blood vessels or arterioles become swollen. There is a central arteriole which becomes swollen and small capillaries arises from this central arterioles like this and forms the web of the spider. That's why this is called spine, spider telangiectasia or spider nevi. The other, other features are palmar erythema that is redness of palms of the hand. This is also because of hyperestrogenemia. 
remember the estrogen is metabolized in the liver when there is impaired function of the liver high levels of estrogen in the blood so this high levels of estrogen causes a vasodilation as a result the sp spider telangiectasia and palmar erythema or redness of the palm of the hand occurs in these patient the other features are cyanosis or central cyanosis this cyanosis is very late feature it is not common it is very late feature this occur because of hypoxemia in the blood hypoxemia because of porto porto pulmonary syndrome or also called hepato pulmonary syndrome arteriovenous shunts form in the lungs due to these arteriovenous shunting there is a hypoxemia in the blood and this cyanosis occurs this is very late feature this is not a common feature of cirrhosis now come to the endocrine changes these endocrine changes are because of high levels of estrogen there is decreased libido hair loss from the body and in the men there is gynecomastia or enlargement of male breast and testicular atrophy reduce size of male testicles and impotence while in the females there is breast atrophy menstrual problems and amenorrhea occurs in case of cirrhosis there is increased tendency in the cirrhosis in cirrhotic patients of hemorrhage so the, these patients may present with bruises purpura and epistaxis that is bleeding from the nose the other complications of the cirrhosis in the, so the portal hypertension portal hypertension is basically a complication or it occurs in advanced stages of the cirrhosis due to the portal hypertension increase pressure in the portal vein increases the backward pressure in the splenic vein as well due to this the splenomegaly occurs in patients as well as esophageal varices may form which on in the severe cases may bleeds so there is a esophageal variceal bleeding in some patients in the advanced stages of cirrhosis as well as collateral vessels arteriovenous shunting or porto systemic shunting occurs in the cirrhosis in the hepatic encephalopathy this is very prominent in acute liver failure as we have discussed in the previous video but it occurs in the chronic liver disease or cirrhosis as well in hepatic encephalopathy occurs because of hyperammonemia normally the ammonia converts into urea in the liver but due to impairment in the liver function there is high levels of ammonia in the blood due to high levels of ammonia astraxis like flapping tremors astraxis are flapping tremors in the hands as we have discussed in the previous video also fetal hepaticus means the rotten egg smell from the breath of the patient because of merceptans accumulation in the blood and hyperreflexia exaggerated reflexes all these are the features of hepatic encephalopathy the other features are pigmentation especially in hemochromatosis when the cause for the cirrhosis is hemochromatosis then pigmentation can be seen in these patients also clubbing because of hypoxemia or reduced oxygen levels in the blood causes clubbing clubbing is basically loss of angle between the nail bed and the underlying skin nearby skin so there is a loss of angle and this is called digital clubbing and the other features are ductrans contracture ductrans contracture is basically thickening or thickening or cord formation of the superficial fascia of the tendons of the little little finger and the ring finger so there is a contracture like this forms in the ductrans contracture and this ductrans contracture is very common in alcoholic cirrhotic patients or alcoholic liver diseases now come to another term that is decompensated liver cirrhosis or chronic liver failure the features of decompensated liver cirrhosis are jaundice portal hypertension variceal bleeds encephalopathy reduced synthetic functions that is increased prothrombin time and decreased albumin levels in the blood the other features are ascites due to ascites the bacterial peritonitis or infection in the peritoneum of the abdomen occurs as well as hepatorenal failure so these are the features of decompensated liver cirrhosis now come to the investigations of cirrhosis for checking the severity of the cirrhosis check the liver functions first in the liver functions there is if there is reduced levels of albumin protein as well as increased ptinr it indicates the worst prognosis in cirrhotic patients decrease albumin below 28 g per liter if then it is indicates that the patient has very worst prognosis in the liver biochemistry alt is high and ast and alkaline phosphatases are also high but 
after some times when the disease progresses, these ALT and AST and alkaline phosphatase becomes normal. Because of severe damage to the hepatocytes, the hepatocytes got replaced by the fibrotic tissues due to the replace, replacement of these due to replacement of these hepatocytes by the fibrotic tissues there is a loss of functions of normal hepatocytes and there is a depletion of these various enzymes so these levels their levels become normal or below normal in the as the disease progresses in the electrolytes the sodium levels if are below normal that is hyponatremia below especially when below 120 millimoles per liter it indicates the worst prognosis of cirrhosis. It indicates that the patient has hepatorenal failure. And in the, if the serum creatine levels are greater than 130 micromoles per liter, then it indicates that patient has worse prognosis because of hepatorenal failure. In order to check the type of cirrhosis, check the viral markers, especially the hepatitis B and hepatitis C markers, autoantibodies for autoimmune hepatitis, ferritin levels for hemochromatosis and coppers for Wilson's disease and alpha-1 antitrypsin for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. In the imaging, ultrasound is very important to check the size and size and shape of the liver. And also to rule out any malignancy, the ultrasound is very important imaging test. In the CT scan, it is also important to rule out hepatocellular carcinoma. Endoscopy is very important to check the varices in the esophagus and portal hypertensive gastropathy portal hypertensive gastropathy for diagnosis and management of varices gastropathy in the mri uh, we, it, this mri scan is also important to check the malignancy and benign tumors the gold standard test is liver biopsy gold standard is liver biopsy to check the type and severity of liver disease liver biopsy is a gold standard test now come to the management of cirrhosis there is no specific management for the cirrhosis the treatment of underlying cause is important treat the complications if present restrict the sodium intake especially below 2 gram per day because of hepatorenal syndrome if present and avoid alcohol and NSAIDs and aspirin these NSAID and aspirins increase the tendency of variceal bleed, so these must be avoided in case of cirrhosis. And the treatment option is liver transplant. Now come to the some prognostic classification, which is called child book classification of prognosis and cirrhosis. This classification has a scoring system 1, 2 and 3. If the ascites is absent, then give this patient 1 score. If ascites is mild, then two score. If ascites is marked very marked or prominent, then give the, then give this patient three score. And same in encephalopathy, if no encephalopathy one, mild two, and marked three score. If the bilirubin levels micromole per liter are less than 34, give this patient one score. From 34 to 50, give this patient two score. If in patient there is more than 50 micromoles per liter, then give this patient three score. In case of albumin gram per liter, if albumin gram per liter is more than 35 gram per liter, give this patient 1 score. But from 28 to 35, give this patient 2 score. And less than 28 gram per liter of albumin, give this patient 3 score. In the same case, PTINR, if the, the seconds above normal, if less than 4 seconds above the normal, 1 score. From 4 to 6 seconds above the normal, 2 score. And greater than 6, 3 score. And then add all these scores, then it is classified as child's books A category, child's B and child's C. This child's A, if the, the sum of all these scores are less than 7, then this is child's A category. And this is the milder case of cirrhosis. But from 7 to 9, this is moderate case of cirrhosis. From greater than 9, this is severe or worse prognostic case of cirrhosis. To convert the bilirubin into milligram per deciliter, divide this micromole per liter value by 17. Now come to the poor prognostic indicators in cirrhosis patient. If there is high levels of bilirubin, increased PTINR and low levels of albumin, especially below 30 gram per deciliter or below 3 gram per deciliter. And there is reduced level of sodium which indicates the hepatorenal failure less than 120 millimoles per liter. In the clinical features, if there is a jaundice, ascites and encephalopathy, 
all these are the laboratory values and the clinical features indicate that this patient has very worse prognosis and this patient needs a liver transplant so this was whole about the cirrhosis we will discuss the complications of cirrhosis in the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching this video